What's up, everybody? Bobby Five back with my man Sheets. We are doing a FanDuel uh, lineup build for, I guess we are, what are we here? Wednesday the 29th. Um, this is a really, what I thought was a, I didn't, a slate I didn't like and now I love. Uh, FanDuel is a little different than DraftKings. We've already done a DraftKings video. Um, I'm going to bring in my man Sheets and have him start talking about what his, th his thoughts are in the slate overall, and then we're going to go position by position. But uh, real quick, as I'm going to do for the bunch of shows to start for the next while, uh, thoughts with you, Kobe. And uh, on top of it, we're looking for little Kobe narratives. Uh, I know it sounds silly, but it, Devin Booker uh, made me some money last night, and uh, I believe that it has to do with uh, guys being a little bit more aggressive, uh, who Kobe meant something to. And uh, not to mention Buddy Heald, who literally was the ultimate Kobe performance and uh, wears 24 because Kobe is the reason he plays basketball. So uh, having said that tonight, you have a guy in your lineup who I'm going to talk about that narrative. Uh, what are your overall thoughts on this slate on FanDuel? Yeah, so I'm going to be the one, and it's going to be interesting because I'm, I'm, I might be pushing the too soon uh, the too soon shelf at some point, and I'm, I don't want to push the too soon shelf with, with the wrong too soon person, Bobby. But So am I, am I allowed to complain that I played Embiid and suggest that he stopped scoring once he got to 24 points last night, and that's why I lost? I guess I can't do that, right? No, I mean, there was a lot of uh, – I feel like there was a lot of other ways it could have gone. I didn't really see Embiid – on the verge of having that monster game, though, did he? Nah, he didn't. <laughs> he was wearing 24, and he I scored know. 24 no, no, he points. Have, and he, and he, look, not coming back from an injury where he's going to be catered to. because right, they're, they're I know, I know. And he also had eight defensive rebounds. Thought I would yeah. know that all. Yeah, if he wasn't 7'4". And, um, you know, but a guy like Devin Booker, who, and, who grew up not only loving him and then also said the most important part of his life was when Kobe told him to go be the legend that you are after they played each other before Booker was anything – um things like that are, are, are i'll buy those narratives and i'll buy the Kyrie if he plays he, I, Kyrie either won't play or if Kyrie plays i think he's going to be thinking of that kind of stuff and i think he's going to just absolutely try and take over all right well let's uh, let's go i'm 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 with you on on uh on FanDuel uh i think i have him in my original thing so Again, what I like to do, and I don't know why I do this more on FanDuel than anything else. What I like to do on FanDuel is kind of look at the positions and I kind of look at the projections and the ownerships and then try to see which of my, you know, projection-based plays match up with the ownerships and which ones are kind of pivots off of them or where I can get some kind of an edge. And then as we go through the, the build, go through the lineups, then uh, the positions, see if any of these guys can maybe correlate with one another and and that's the way i started to make my main builds so i've actually been playing um fewer lineups uh for no other, i don't even know why i mean it's I just i just have been and so uh we'll we'll, we'll see kind of where where we head so at, at the point guard position the all right so the kind of the top owned guys are kind of the guys i like the most so we'll, we'll, we'll talk about those we can rank them as we want but i, I do like De'Aaron fox today uh and kyrie irving those are probably going to be my two favorites on uh, FanDuel, though um, you could make a better case, a little bit better case for Damian Lillard. He's down, he's at ninety eight hundred on FanDuel as opposed to, I mean, more on DraftKings, I suppose. But uh, and he's going to take take some ownership also. Um, then also, if you want to go down in value, the I guess top value guy is going to be Dejounte Murray at forty four hundred on, on at point guard. But the one guy who might not get the ownership. Uh, on uh, on FanDuel because of Dejounte Murray because of the other you know positional issues and all this stuff is I might consider uh, Mike Conley. We talked about it a little bit on DraftKings, but I think I also would consider him as a uh, as a cheap value on FanDuel as well. And just based on the first ownership I'm looking at, he doesn't look to be as highly owned here, if at all, um, compared to what he might be on DraftKings because they're such great point guards. You know, these I think these two both these point guards look pretty solid here. Um, but I would go Conley would be my, I guess, pivot. That's the best way I can describe it off of the, off the Murray. But as far as the, the, the better point guards, I like Fox and Irving with Lillard to be my next guy. I agree with everything you said. I actually am going to take the stance that I think point guard is also loaded again today, uh, in a lot of ways, because there's a lot of plays I like that I don't see people going towards necessarily. I, I love Elf Payton today. Um, I'm just making that one clear. I, I love, uh, I love Chris Paul or John or, uh, or Shea. I think Chris Paul is where I'm leaning a little bit, but I don't like that he's an, a point guard eligible. So that's the, really the one reason why I would consider Shea to be the better overall play. 
I love Ja Morant. I like I like the idea of playing a little Ja Morant, Alfred Payton action. Um, mm. I also think Derek that's Eaton's, really that's really off the board too. And it shouldn't be that much, you know what I mean? Look at even the results. If you just look at their production, this, you're looking at near nearly six times production on their price with a different with a differentiating build. Kyrie is my favorite guy. I'm going to be playing Kyrie as much as possible tonight, assuming he plays. If for some reason we have him as really – we'll find out. That's the truth. Um, I, 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 I can make I, – I don't find myself gravitating as much towards Fox, even though I really like him. I just think that I prefer all the other plays I mentioned a little bit more. Um, it's hard, man. Point guard to me, and, and even though we're on, on DK, it, it's so loaded to me. I just find myself trying to play so many point guards everywhere because I like them. And uh, did I mention the, the, the just complete beast play because of the other guys who I like? I, I like Lillard, too, by the way. Um, I have no problem if you want to just go for it. We don't, let's say we don't know about Harden. Um, play Westbrook and Lillard. Uh, <laughs> go for it. Let's, let's, get, let's get a rematch of what happened. Uh, or, or, you know, not a rematch. Hopefully it'll have a different result. But uh, we can get these guys to go nuts against each other, which we've seen them do a number of times. And uh, if Harden somehow misses, Westbrook at 11K is completely fine. Um, so I like playing Westbrook on that speculation over here with either Lillard or Kyrie. Um, I think that you could argue that it's just basically Kyrie's the better play. But if you're going to play Westbrook, to play the back and forth seems to make some sense. So... And then, I, you know, we mentioned all the other guys that we like. I don't see myself getting to Conley over here because I think I want more points from the position. I don't even see myself maybe in a lineup or two going down to Murray. I could see it because I think there's some, some steal of block upside, obviously, for him as always. Um, and I love him over here on FanDuel for those reasons. But just because Elf paid him. And by the way, Malcolm Brogdon at 6,200, if he's going to play, like how do we not – like is he going to be lost completely in this? He's not going to be as highly owned if he, if he comes back. You know, he's, in concu- he's in concussion protocol. And if he plays, again, it's going to be one of those things also. If he plays, he's going to play. You know, he's, he's not going to play limited minutes. You know what I mean? If he's either going to play or he's not going to play. And yeah. I, thought of, I, thought, I, thought, I thought about him. Um, but I think the combination of the matchup, which is not ideal, plus the better, better options at the position, I think even – if you want to go, you know, make the low own argument, I, I think that one of your other plays um, is going to be just as good of a play. And maybe – actually, I would say Moran has probably got to get, probably get more ownership than, than Brogdon. I don't think exceedingly much. And I think Moran is pro- – I would probably rather go to him than, than to Brogdon. Yeah. I, I, it just feels weird that a guy at 6,200 we would be paying – even. Like, I feel like his price is 7K plus in this, in any matchup. Like, just with, assuming Oladipo is limited. And we're going to, you know, right now, everything I'm looking at is projecting Oladipo for, what, 20 minutes? Which, by the way, we're going to get to him in a minute. (laughs) Um, But this is a, this is a position that I feel like is stronger than the projections would indicate. Uh, Let's put it that way. So, like I've been doing a lot of my lineups, I'm going to be rotating different point guard combinations over here. And, uh. I think the ownership, you know, outside of like, I, if I'm not going to be playing that much Fox, I can spread it out because I like everybody else and it's all pretty spread out anyway. I can get ahead of the field and all the guys I want. You know, I'd be remiss if I didn't give a quick slate, slate review preview only because there's going to be a kind of like premier, although chalky value at center. And, and there's going to be also some really, really good, low price possibilities on FanDuel as opposed to DraftKings where it's not quite as, quite as obvious, not obvious, but um, not that it's that obvious on FanDuel, but you can, you, you can get that Westbrook Lillard thing in if you wanted to, you know, without, without burying yourself where, where DraftKings is a little, I, I think it's a little harder to, to, to play too much, uh, too much salary. Yeah. Agreed. We'll see. Yeah. Okay. So, um, Going ahead now to shooting guard. Um, this was the, – the way I was looking at shooting guard is this. There was, I was going to go one of two ways. And th- this kind of depends on, obviously, if Harden plays or not, um, which also would help determine whether I want to do a point guard because I, I might be with you. I don't know if I can stomach Westbrook at 11K if Harden's playing. But um, if Harden's not playing, I might take a shot at that. But if Harden's playing at shooting, shooting guard – 
Uh, I certainly consider him one of the best plays. Um, and if he's playing, I presume he's going to get a lot of ownership also. The, the real play for me on shooting, shooting guard, and I don't know how I'm fading this, is, is, is Bogdanovich, actually. I mean, mm-hmm. he's only 44 freaking 100. And, and yeah, it would be ideal if he played 32 minutes against the reserves and got everything you wanted. But I know he's going to be chalky. But, I mean, if you're getting 30 minutes out of him ever, I mean, a 4,400, I, I, and it's not like the shooting guard position is that tremendous that, you know what I mean? <laughs> I, I, I think that he's probably the first guy that I'm, honestly, that I'm putting in. Um, aside from him, uh, next guys I have, I just, I really just have three more guys. I, you could talk about Aladipo. I didn't even think about him. But I was, uh, D- D- Donovan Mitchell, DeMar DeRozan, and at th- at this, in this side, I'll go to Shea a little bit, so. I would say Mitchell, then DeRozan, then Shea. Um, but I think Bogdan would be the first guy I'd make sure to get in, actually. I love Bogdan. I agree. He's my top priority over here. I, I have only a couple other guys. I think that James Harden is still a terrific play and is going to be the chalk, but it makes perfect sense why. Um, that game is just <laughs> – we see these Houston games are just out of control. Like, not quite like a Washington, but they're pretty out of control. Um, DeMar DeRozan stands out as being an exceptional play to me. I am not going to be playing Donovan Mitchell, I don't think, over here, even though it's, it's fine. It's just not where I'm going to go. Um, I love Bogdanovich, and I think that the next guy I'll use with him would be DeRozan, followed by Harden. Yeah, I'd say followed by Harden, then DeRozan. And then there's one guy I really uh, – I think we've got to consider Oladipo. It's an unspecified number of minutes. He's 4K. Um, let's just say there's only the upside on that is only 22 or 24. Even at 20, where he, like he's projected, easily, easily could put up 30 fantasy points in 20 minutes. Now, if it goes up to 24, like you could have a game in that time. I don't know. It's, what happens if, 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 if they're willing to stretch it? Who knows? I don't, I'm, I'm unsure of where I stand or if it's necessary. It just feels very tempting. Um, I, I'm gonna make I'm gonna make this this prediction again. This is a um, a prediction. This is a statistical analysis where I have not done, and I'm sure smarter people than I or people with more time than I have made this made this uh, analysis. But I'm gonna suggest the following: that if you have a guy like Oladipo or anybody like this that's coming off of, a, of an injury that has a minutes restriction, or anybody that comes out with a minutes restriction, if they know that they, they have 20 minutes or 15 minutes or 24 minutes. I'm going to suggest that actually their points per minute is actually much higher than it would otherwise be. If they know that they're just going full out for 20 minutes, they don't have to worry about pacing themselves, their short spurts, whatever it is you like to call it nowadays, mm-hmm. I'm actually going to suggest that whatever rate you would give him playing 20 minutes of, of, with, no, with no limit um, is going to be higher if you're going to just cap him at 20 because you know he has, to, he knows he's capped to, he has those 20, he can go full out without worrying about being stretched. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. And by the way, I, I do think it's worth mentioning. I know I don't want to mention everybody else because I, I don't know how much of, of them I'll end up with here. But I did mention Shea as a, another guy I like tonight. I also do like the idea if you're not going to play Bogdanovich to take another shot on Buddy Heald, take, hopefully taking up another million shots uh, in honor of Kobe. Um, and uh, I think that's an interesting way to go that's going to end up being completely unknown. It's weird to see a guy who just put up 50-plus – uh, be played even though he played a bunch of minutes. I don't think the minutes are going to affect him. Um, sure, jump shooters on the back to back, all that stuff. But like, if Buddy Heald is, I mean, in true Kobe mode, the way he's talking and every interview is suggesting such, um, let's go. But let's uh, let's keep taking shots on him while he's while he's this. I'll people. tell you this: there's a lot, there's a lot of, of of weird stuff going on in this game. You know, keep keep in mind, you know, with uh, you have the Brogdon concussion, you have Oladipo with, with minutes that are going to – whatever minutes they are, they're going to impact other people's usage. And it, it creates an interesting defensive situation too because Oladipo, I mean, before he got hurt at least, he's played really good defense. And uh, I guess it makes Zach Levine a little marginally less appealing. But he's also got other issues. Like Zach Levine is going for an all-star spot. So he's yeah. – I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't care who's guarding him. He's going to get – He's going to get up his shots. I don't, I don't mind Levine at all either. I just was saying, and actually maybe this business is a little better than I gave it credit for, but I do feel just so leading that, that I think DeRozan's a really strong play. I think Harden's a really strong play. I think Bogdanovich yeah. and Oladipo 
I agree. Like Oladipo, and Oladipo being the speculative one, but I think that those are such strong plays, it's going to be harder for me over here to find maybe the Buddy Heald that I really like and, and the, uh, you know, the Zach Levines, even though I, I do really like those guys. Yeah, I would play as they would like to say. I would, that's the problem. I would like to play Levine in like a game stack, and I think that, that, the, that Indiana is kind of a little – they're like better now because they're getting these guys back and you know, whatever. But I, I just, I don't think that I can find the game stack with, with, uh, with Levine actually. Anyway. Yeah. Um, going on to small forward. And it was funny, you know, in between shows, I was asking you, I'm like, why is it that when I'm running some optimals on, on uh, DraftKings, I'm getting a lot of, uh, I'm getting a lot of Kevin Knox for some reason, who I just never played. I didn't even think about covering. And then when I'm looking at ownership and FanDuel, I'm seeing that Marcus Morris, 5,800 is picking up some, you know, huge amounts of ownership. I was wondering why that was. I didn't, wasn't even aware that you would, that, you know, you told me in the middle that, that uh, Bobby Portis was, I guess, cut or sent down to no, 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 no. The rumor is that he's being oh. sent to the G League. Oh, okay. So speculation. Oh, okay. I, uh, they touched on it on the morning grind. I don't know what's really happening. and I haven't dug in yet on that. Um, I would say that if he's out, I think that it does make these guys much better plays. Okay. Um, Okay, it just uh, yeah. So Marcus Morris is looking like I mean, I can't imagine playing a forty percent on Marcus Morris. If you want to know the truth, okay. But I guess it's a testament to how kind of weak this position is actually. So uh, the, the top guys that I have at this position are are guys like this, like like Marcus Morris, and then um, Bojan, the other Bogdanovich, Gallinari, the same stupid small forward six K guys that. Always just kind of, I end up playing that never do anything for me. Actually, sometimes they do. Um, Carmelo, you could talk about him. He looks all right. But a guy I didn't bring up on DraftKings um, who is really super cheap here is, uh, is Trevor Ariza um, on, at small forward and in a really, really, really weak position in, uh, in, I would say, pace-up match or whatever. It's just going to be a high-scoring game or whatever. He's, um, he's played for Houston before, if that, if that matters. And uh, he's been playing big minutes since he's come over there. And at 3,700, I'll, I'll probably play him. Wait, I didn't – I'm sorry. I got distracted by another – you got a guy at 3,700 here? Who is it? Trevor Ariza. Oh. Makes a lot of sense, actually, more than I thought at first. But it's a good – it's, it's, it's a little – dude, it's like a hopeless position, and he's going to be playing 34 minutes in a – Here's 230 total against his former team. I mean, well, like, it might be a hopeless position. What are you really saving? Like these, there are other cheap. I mean, it's not like Marcus Morris, Carmelo Anthony are that expensive. It's not like you know, like Terrain Prince is 1,000 more. I would probably play Terrain Prince. Oh yeah. I, I mean, but but if it was 3K on DraftKings, we'd be having a different conversation. In fact. What is his price on DraftKings? Let me take a quick yeah, look. I didn't even notice him when we were looking at that. How did I? How did I? How did that skip us? How did we miss out on that? Um, Forty nine hundred. That's how. That's that's how we missed out. On it. That's how we missed out on it. Um, uh, that, you know, that's a bad, it's it's an interesting play. Um, I think I'm leaning just much more the very very obvious. Joe Ingles is a great play. Joe Ingles. That's so fun. I didn't even look at him at all. Carmelo Anthony is a great play. I actually have Joe Ingles in one of my big ones on on DK at the moment. Um, I think Carmelo Anthony is a great play tonight. You're into Carmelo today, huh? I'm all about Carmelo today. I, I, I'm going to take this, these narratives as far as they are. I think you're going to see Carmelo shoot the ball upwards of 15, 16 times at least, maybe even as many as 20. Um, I think he's going to play a boatload of minutes, and um, that's just where I stand. I, it's weird, though, because I can say that about a lot of guys, but also like this is a great matchup. Like Everything about it is just not just narrative and stuff. Um, but I, I, I think Carmelo – Gallinari would be my favorite. I don't see the why the projections are as low on Gallinari as they are. Um, the minutes I can explain why they sh haven't been quite as high, but I think there is still definitely upside on this thirty-one. And also, there's it's it's not like a, a bad spot at all for him. And I, I just think he's a strong play. Um, so I think Gallinari is is a guy I definitely want some exposure. He's the, the prices are so don't matter like. If I really cared about price and I also wanted to go down instead of playing like Ariza, you could consider playing Jay Crowder. You know what I mean? We've got no D'Anthony Melton. I think he's – oh, is he back? Yeah, he's back tonight. We have no D'Anthony Melton. Um, so a lot of weird plays at this – like, yeah, Bogdan – I mean, Bojan makes some sense, but 
my pre my preference is definitely to spend up a little bit, which is not spending up that much. Um, but right now I'm in the I'm in the Carmelo Gallinari is being probably my favorite too. CJ Warren, TJ Warren, all fine. I like everybody in this range above 4,700, especially the guys above 5,100, except for Eric Gordon. Um, I'm I'm I'm, I'm pissed that uh, Oladipo's back or whatever it is. I've been really getting uh getting used to playing freaking Doc, Doug, Doug McDermott. I mean, he's, he's been a nice and cheap guy to always, uh, to always fill out roster spots. He was never, never seemed to fail, but yeah. Okay. Uh, again, I, I just think the position is a freaking a disaster. I don't know. A disaster. I mean, it's a disaster for everybody. I suppose. Why, why is it a disaster? Like Gallinari, how often is he going to get 30 fantasy points here? Like probably like 75% of the time, maybe higher. Right. You know, and then also we know there's always upside on that. Like, why? I don't know. I don't see this being a disaster. I, Carmelo, how often is he going to get to 30? At, in my opinions. Well, ask ask Lillard. Ask Lillard how often he's going to pass it to him. I don't know. There we go. We'll see. I mean, he gets his shots up usually, so I'm not too worried about Carmelo. But I also think you get that extra um from Carm. Uh, he can put up a he can put up a number here. All right. So let's go ahead to uh, to power forward. And what do I have for power forward? Actually, a power forward, the guys that I liked were the, were the most popular guys. So I'll, I'll just tell you who they are. I like, uh, I like Julius Randle uh, and uh, DeMontis Sabonis. And, again, I, I, I think Sabon with uh, Oladipo back, again, only 20 minutes. I don't think it affects Sabonis' usage all that much, I guess. Um, he looks to be one of my favorite point guard, uh, power forwards. And the other guy – is Jaron Jackson Jr., who, again, you know, we talked about a DraftKings. I wanted to play either him or, or, or Valanchunas. I always end up playing Valanchunas. But here, um, uh, I like Jaron Jackson Jr. in this spot. So, again, he's going to be owned also. And I guess the other guy I'll bring up is, uh, is Thad Young, who you can talk about if you want. Um, we liked him a little bit on DraftKings. Um, you want to pay down a power forward, you could do that. But you're bringing up an interesting point. Like, where, where are you spending money um, if you, if you want to save money? You know, um, you look, you can play Harden because he's not in this lineup. So I guess that matters. Um, but you're making a good point in that if you're going to pay down for kind of crappy players, what, what, are you, what are you gaining by doing that? So I think power forward, I might end up being playing a chalky high points pair here, just kind of like this. Yeah. Um, I don't know what else to do here. So I, I am going with I'm, – I just realized I'm 100 off – of my perfect build of exactly oh. what I'm trying to get. I hate Can when you I buy a hundred from FanDuel somehow. So basically, <laughs> no, but I have a very simple solution. So instead of playing Carmelo, ugh, that's how I end up with Mark Marcus Morris. Um, or I could play Bogdanovich or Warren. I think I would lean those guys way. And now I'm just got, I've got my lineup built. Okay. Um, so I love Sabonis. I don't even think there's a reason to really get too creative and try and think about other things other than him or Randall should be like your main focus, um, in my opinion. I think that Jaron Jackson would be the next play, um, slightly ahead of Bielitsa. And I think that there, I think we've got to look at something with Jared Allen, which I forgot to mention on, on DraftKings. I know that it was a different type of game and I know that we had no DeAndre Jordan. I just think that the fact that he was head to head and or whatever and he put up 52 against uh, uh, the last time they played Detroit the other day is probably worth taking a look at it. 6,200 as someone who I don't think like it's weird when you in the last time of a matchup and someone puts up that kind of a number on you, you'd think that they would be like the massive chalk. And he's actually getting some ownership, actually a little bit more than I initially thought of. Um, but I think he's kind of an interesting play. I thought it was a little more off the board apparently than he is, and then. You've got Noel trending in the right direction. Um, I don't think I'm going to take that stand tonight, but if you did for some reason need to spend down, I don't think it's the worst idea in the world. Is he, what is, is he 4K? 43. Um, yeah. You know, Thaddeus Young, I think it's fine. I love the speculating on Brandon Clark. I'm just sort of naming the other guy names. Like the main yeah. guys for me are the other guys. It's Sabonis, Randall, Jackson, Allen. Um, I guess you can throw Thad into that mix too. Um, that's pretty much where I'm at. Uh, everybody else is – all those other guys are in place, solid plays, but not my, not my favorites. I mean, I could certainly run a, uh, a Randall with, uh, with John Morant if I felt like it. Yeah. 
Uh, uh, also, you know what's really funny though? It's like we never play PG Tucker because we're just sort of used to the same thing. The guy has been like wicked consistent in, you know, even with a, you know, he's put 25 or more in his last four games. Just kind of an interesting thing for a guy who's 4,300 and just no one's gonna look at, oh my God, and I forgot my other play. This, the sneaky real pay down though is Trey Lyles. But again, you look at it like, even if he has a good game, PJ Tucker could, could if PJ Tucker has a good game and, and Trey Lyles has a good game, PJ Tucker's good game is probably gonna be better than Trey Lyles is because he just, I, I don't know what it would, you know, but he'll be probably a double double or something like that. I don't know, actually, I, I, I sort of like those guys as spend downs, but overall over here, I think that you just have such good, such good plays and good prices on these guys at the top. You don't really need to get there uh, unless you want to do something different center. All right, so the, here's, the, here's the deal at center, all right? Um, so Jacopotl is going to be the, the, the huge chalk. He's 50%, 60% probably minimum. He's still 4,400. They didn't raise his price at all, and, and LaMarcus Aldridge is still out. And you could argue this one of two ways, um, well, many ways, but one argument is, you know, they're going to need him to play big minutes to match up with Gobert. And, you know, another way to put it is, boy, it's a tough matchup because he's got to play against Gobert. You know, so, so one leads to more minutes, one argument leads to more minutes, and one argument leads to foul risk and, and just efficiency problems. Um, so you're going to have to make the decision of, of whether the 60% ownership is something you're willing to eat. So the, the same comment I do all the time. If you're going to play Pirtle, you're just going to have to do something else somewhere else. You, know, you just can't get away with basically this lineup I'm putting out there. For example, I don't even remember really looking at it. Like, but, but so, so, so if you play Pirtle, that's what you're, you're going to have to kind of do something else somewhere else. But if you want to do something other than Pirtle, I think there's – Two and a half, three ways to go, and depending on your risk tolerance. Well, one, which is an obvious way to go, is you could pay all the way up for center and go to uh, two really good plays, either Andre Drummond or or Hassan Whiteside. Okay, and you you have the you're, look. You're not going to be able to play Harden if you do that, along with a good point guard. But if you want to play some of this other kind of fishy value, you can certainly get away with it, and and you can move up to Drummond and Whiteside. I really have no preference between either of them if I had to choose between the two of them. The the what, I have two don't try this at home uh, attempts. One is just a complete direct price pivot to Mitchell Robinson uh, from Pirtle. Um Now again, all this has to presume that Pirtle just you know either busts or doesn't you know just doesn't smash him. You can certainly see roots for it happening. I just can visualize a nineteen point game, we certain nineteen fantasy point game. It certainly could happen between the foul risk and the lack of efficiency against a really good center and. And all that stuff. I mean, it certainly could happen. Not too likely. But if you want just a direct price pivot and you don't want to keep your other lineups the same, you could do that. But one guy you kind of brought up on DraftKings that I want to just throw out there, if you want to play like a 0% on guy, you could – I mean, you could try Steven Adams at 5K. I mean, he's 5K. If he could play freaking 30 – 30 minutes or something like that, maybe at 5K, and he's an actual real player, and it's not like Dwayne Dedmond or whoever, whatever they'll do is going to impact his, his, his rates, really. So that's another way you can go. Um, but Pirtle is, is clearly the best value. But if you play him, then you're going to have to de elsewhere. How about that? Yeah, so my pivots are really simple. Um, I like Pirtle over here. I don't like him on DraftKings. Um, I think he'll be fine on DraftKings. I just think that at the ownership he'll be no, no thanks. Um, I think this is really simple. You play if you you could take that pivot to Mitchell Robinson, which I think is a really interesting pivot, and I really like it. Um, I also like the Stephen Adams idea, but I the more I think about the Stephen Adams thing, I think Miles Turner would be a better play than either of them. Because Turner, for one thing, you know, assuming he plays his normal minutes, like he should get there just by accident against the Chicago team anyway. Um, it doesn't really affect him having Oladipo. You're, t you're looking for rebounds, blocks like, against a team that, that does give up those things. Um, and at, at, you know, at no ownership at 800 more than Pirtle, could he outscore Pirtle by 10 points? Yes. And he's, is he, you know, 800 more? I'll take that. I think that's very, very possible. Um, and then the other, the, the other ones you can go with are the Capella or my favorite would probably be to go all the way up to Gobert. Yeah, that would, that would be the pay-up option. That would be 1%. So, but I'm already paying up for Westbrook and Kyrie in the backcourt or Lillard probably in my yeah, big – You're not going to be able to do it with that. Yeah, you won't – well, you, you – I mean, 
it just gets really met murky. That's when you start playing some of the, the really minimal. Then, then, you're, then you're in Trevor Ariza season for sure. Oh, then, then you're then, then Trevor Ariza becomes your favorite your favorite human being. Right. I actually right. do like this spot for Trevor Ariza. I mean, first of all, you also have like your, your I mean, not that it matters, but like I like when guys play their former teams, or I don't like it. Like it, I think it I think it has like different things for different players. But it's not just because they get up for it. It's just like I feel like people are more comfortable. It's like a they feel more okay. Trevor Ariza can sometimes be passive. I feel like he'd be less passive in this type of environment. You know what I mean? Like little things like that are enough to sway me on a guy who's minimum cost, you know, over here, I would say. He's going to get 30 plus minutes in a 335 game total. You know what I mean? Like he'll, he'll get his. Yeah. Yeah. So the one, one other thing, again, this is, this is a perfect example why every slate's different. So the reason why I'm asking this is maybe it's not this simple. I'll just throw this out there. I have I have a couple of questions, maybe a couple of pop questions. Number one is is Richard Holmes back? I haven't heard that he's back. No, I haven't either. Is Marvin Bagley back? I haven't heard that. He, no, and I mean, unless you're, you're is, is, Dwayne, is Dwayne Dedman still thirty seven hundred? I have them all. Yeah, but Dwayne Dedman's not playing. You sure? Well, this game he might. I mean, this is a good. It's a good point. It's just like against Minnesota, he played fifteen minutes. You know what I mean? I hear you. I don't know what would make them. I don't know. He did play in overtime, which is weird. I don't know how it even worked. Who did they play? Because I wasn't watching that game particularly, but I noticed that. Um, who did they even have in their lineup? Oh. I'm, I'm just, I'm just, I, you know, I'm just, I'm just asking. I'm, I'm just, just, they just played super small. Even again. Well, they remember, they, remember, we played him, or we, we said he was, he was a fade against Chicago because they didn't need him, right? Yeah, and didn't play too much. Then they had a pretty good game. I don't, I don't know. Who knows? <laughs> but, but again, like, again, if you're going to look for an off the board type thing, you're going to go chalky elsewhere. I mean, I can think, I think, I can think of worse things than playing Dwayne Deadman. I don't know that much worse, but I, I can definitely think of some worse things. Yeah, maybe. Like, I mean, play, like playing Dante Exum last night. But like you're, you're getting, like, so Deadman would have to like, like. But what about? I think I would. Try, rather play just 800 more for Rit Robinson if I wanted to get off the chalk. I guess Deadman's yeah. less chalk, but so if, if Deadman's puts up 30, you're in you're great shape. But oh, even yeah. then, well, not if Portal puts up 40. But if Portal, Portal obviously, <laughs> like Portal puts up, this is the problem. No, but you're not in terrible shape if he puts up 40. Maybe what we're supposed to do is what you said. Maybe, maybe, well, no, you said, maybe what we're supposed to do is play Portal mostly, and then maybe just I don't know, maybe go all the way up. I don't know. What what about um? Okay, so yeah, or hard. I mean, you can play Harden too. Like, I mean, there's Harden is going to be so chalky. Um, Harden, I bet here. Here's here. You want to do a bet? I bet yeah. you Harden ends up more owned on FanDuel if he's in. <laughs> Obviously, he has to be announced in. Um, if he's announced in before you know the lock, he's going to be higher owned than uh, Poto. Zero chance. You're wrong. People are going to look – they're going to be desperate to try and find a place to spend up, and they're not going to be willing to spend 11K on Westbrook. That's the truth. The only way that's this, – it's the exact way this happens. Oh, my God, now I've got my beautiful bill. Listen to this. Listen to these guys. Like, a, you get a John ja Morant, Elford Payton backcourt, Harden and DeRozan. Uh, Wait, the, stop, stop. Before you even go anywhere. So you said ja, ja, uh, Morant and Pe Payton and, and – and Peyton backcourt. You already can do whatever you want. I can do pretty much whatever wise. I want. And ownership-wise in every other position. Yeah, DeMar DeRozan, then I'm playing Gallinari and Carmelo at the small forward. Power yeah. forwards, Julius Randle, Trey Lyles. Ooh. Center. center I've got, I, I don't need to go crazy. Like I, I can switch. I have to switch my centers. The problem is I'm 100 off from being able to do it. But I've got Mitchell Robinson in right now. This actually is a lineup because I have so much Knicks. Oh, you don't need that. You could play Pirtle in this lineup. Th that's what I should do. And I, the problem is my other big lineup, I'm playing two big ones on FanDuel. And, I mean, I'm giving away a lot of stuff right now. Um, no, but no one's listening. Don't worry. Well, I don't see. But I also sort of like the Knicks. Smack, like, I mean, that would give me a nice. And then my other one, I've got, like, Jaron Jackson and Marquise Mar uh, Mar Mar Morrison. Um, or Mar Marcus Morrison, excuse me. Um, but I think I'm going to change that one. That's way too chalk. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I love that lineup, man. That's, see, that's what I'm talking about. Let's hammer that game. If Bobby Portis is, in fact, gone, let's just – I mean, somebody's going to go nuts in that front court. Are they? I mean, you've got – Yeah, it's going to be Randall. 
Randall, well, Randall, yeah, he's one of them. Because, but Robinson, I mean, if Robinson plays 25 minutes in this game, and he's going to play 25 minutes in this game, he's going to put up like 30-plus fantasy points. This is a game suited for him. It's his pace. It's a team that attacks the basket. It's a team that turns the ball over. It's a team that, that scores quickly. It, it's, there's everything. It's just unless he gets in foul trouble, which is very possible, um, I think that that's, that's a, he's a, he's a great play. Yeah, I think that um, as I'm looking at this, I think that, like I said, if you, if you can pivot off of either Pirtle or those two point guards like Irving and Fox, um, who I think are really going to – I really think both those guys are going to be pretty popular. If you could pivot off of two of those three, then, then you don't really need to worry about too much else, about being too, too off the board. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Um, you, have Bogd- you have Bogdanovich in that lineup you just mentioned? I have uh, I, I have Bogdan in this. No, it's not, well, not in that one. In that one, I had Harden and, and DeRozan. I, I decided. Oh, to- okay, okay. My other lineup, I have Bogdanovich and Oladipo as my, small, as my shooting guards, and I have Westbrook and Kyrie as my, guard, as my point guards. Oladipo. Interesting. What, what did I, what, 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 what I'll take that shot, but I'm definitely open. What did Zion Williamson end up doing last night? Did five action or something? Um, not quite. I think, I don't remember yeah. what the final was. It wasn't, wasn't great, but I still, I mean, it's, I still stand by the, that being a good play. No, I'm, I'm just I'm thinking about these, these minute, minutes restriction guys. Oh, gotcha. They're, they're, they always, they always, they always scare me. A little bit. Yeah. Um, well, it's all different for each guy. I mean, like, Look, all you're, deep, not, you're really you're going to play all the deep, huh? And with the bonus in the same lineup, by the way, which I have no problem doing. Um, I like it. I mean, he's 4K, man. Like, this is not like we're asking for a million things. If I can get from between him and Bogdanovich, if I can get 70 fantasy points, which is possible, 65 even, I'm in great shape. I mean, not that, not that that's so off the board, but then when you've met, factored in with my paying up for Westbrook at point guard on that lineup, it just – Yes, that's are you gonna are you gonna play Westbrook with no are you gonna play Westbrook with no news on Harden? Uh, I think that it's I, I'm open to playing West. I'm interested in Westbrook tonight anyway. I like him in like revengey situations. This team is uh, he got taunted, he got punked to be honest, and uh, if that takes his what, shots up. What, what do you what do you mean by that? Tell everybody what you mean. I, the I'm playoffs last year against with OKC against Portland, they got swept. Lillard out played him pretty badly. And hit the game winner, and then wave them up, wave goodbye off the court. Oh, really? Uh, they had good battles in the past. Mostly Westbrook has dominated a lot. Well, he's dominated statistically in a lot of them, and and in wins. Um, but hard uh, at the same time, Lillard's had some monster games against Westbrook. They have that series. He got absolutely dominated by Lillard. Um, so I I like both those guys, but I'm just uh, I, I'm actually sad not to have Lillard in this lineup. I think I'm going to actually consider playing a Westbrook Willard lineup on DraftKings. Probably not one of my big ones, but definitely one of the other ones. Yeah, I'm going to um, – I'll tell you, my, my, my hot take whatever today is that um, you're not going to need as many points as you think on FanDuel. Um, I'm, not, I'm just kind of looking at this. I don't think it's a hot take. I guess not. I completely agree with you. Unless we hear about things being out to the point where, like, you can play like four guys at nine k and right. they all put up like sixty. Well, we're we, well, you know, but we're like the worst curse in the world because I mean, literally, like five minutes after whenever we finish recording, the highest projected player on the slate always gets ruled out. So we're gonna we're gonna see what happens. I think as soon as we want, we fire this up. We're gonna get the what are we gonna get? Kyrie Irving out personal again, or uh, who else are we gonna get? Uh, hard now, somebody like that. Yeah, probably. We'll That's see. the way it goes, I guess. But you know what? We did give other plays, and we did the live stuff yesterday, which I actually thought went pretty Oh, I'm pumped. Pretty I, if you do the live thing, I don't know if I'm going to be around, but if, if you do the live thing and I'm, I'm around for that, I, I can't I, – I would love to, to, to see how we build your um, – how we build your cash game lineup because, you know, it's, it's usually not your thing. Yeah, it's actually a, an interesting thing. Uh, what's really interesting is what if I just posted it and then just let the guy decide what he was going to do. How about that? I thought that was a really clever thing to do. What do you, mean, do? To po- what, what do you mean post it? Oh, show, send, somehow make sure he sees it. Well, how do you do that? I mean, do you know who he is? I mean, I'll figure it out. I can okay. find him, man. I know the industry. It's just kind of an interesting, like, don't you think that would be a hard thing to play against? 
if, if I was really optimal, if I felt I was optimal and that was my lineup and I was showing it live up to lock. Yeah. But you know, the problem is, is that I can make a late switch, all those things. Sure. But like, yeah, but the pop, oh, all this, dra oh, this is DraftKings too, right? Yeah. You could show whatever you want, honestly, because you can always change everything. <laughs> I think it's. I, 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 what, I, wait, what games at seven? What games at seven o'clock? Yes, the question oh. whether you are or aren't, and you can just decide. It feels like taking control. It feels like a smart way to play heads up to me. Yeah, um, I, I don't know. I think I think my natural my natural in inclination is to call BS on that. Just because, just in general, like the more information you have at your disposal, the better, and the less information you disseminate yeah. is usually better. No, I okay. I think most players would try to find pivots that they shouldn't be trying to find and hit. Them. Okay. Oh, that's something else. Then. Okay. That's my, that's my take, but I don't know. But do you know who the best plays are on DraftKings? I mean, like, it's actually really hard. Oh well, yeah. Best. I've got to figure that part out. <laughs> like, yeah. um, once I figure that out, I'll, I'll let you know. Um, yeah. But yeah. Oh, anyway. come on. We know, we know who the best plays are, but we, we just, you know, they're, they're going to be chalky. I mean, we, they're gonna be we, we know that, um, Not all of them. we know that, uh, we know Dennis Smith Jr. is going to be the best play on DraftKings. We don't, you don't need us to tell you that. <laughs> all right um well guys anyway hope you enjoyed the show uh, again please give us the like the thumbs up and uh subscribe all that stuff uh r.i.p kobe and good luck to everybody we'll see you at the top of the leaderboards